Good morning, everyone. I begin with a big thank you to all the coordinators of the Charisma Project, in particular to the benefit company Mazzini Lab and to the University of Krems for hosting this course and inviting us to have a little chat in terms of technology and digitization. I'm Angelica Maritan, the founder of SpeakArt, a company working on the application of digital processes in the cultural heritage and collectible sector. And I will talk about technology linked to the risk assessment and the risk management. The subject is uh, huge, but uh, I will try to summarize it as much as possible. So let's see together the topics of today. The first one is uh, what we can digitize, both content and container. The second is which digital technology are used for risk assessment and risk management. The third one is an example of uh, a high level of technology, uh, for example, uh, the damage recognition through computer vision, computational calculation and artificial intelligence. And the last one is uh, technology in small steps, some sentences useful for us. Okay, let's start with uh, what we can digitize. Uh, this process can concern every single aspect of the management of collectibles and archives and the places that actually host them. So what means content? Uh, they are uh, usually collectibles and archives and the container are the buildings, so museums uh, and warehouses. Let's start from the content. We, uh, as you can see in this slide, there is the UNESCO World Heritage Map. And uh, uh, the presence of art objects is not actually the only one to focus on. There are many other objects like historical documents, archeological and naturalistic goods, uh, philately, numismatic, design, antique, furnishing, memorabilia, uh, jewels, vintage cars, clothes, wine, and many others. And they must be treated with the same respect and care because they are part of our heritage, cultural heritage. Uh, the word cultural heritage is made up of very diverse assets and uh, um, they are particularly uh, distinguished by geographical areas, economic status of the country and external influences. This, maps, uh, this map uh, is on the web, you can uh, take a look on it. Uh, it's uh, actually in real time uh, and uh, it gives us an idea of the concentration of the heritage around the world and also an idea of where a figure like a risk manager is more necessary in the world. Now let's talk about the container. Quite often the buildings that house collectible, especially in Europe, are themselves a cultural heritage. The historical buildings can preserve a really high value uh, in their architectural and decorative structure. And we have two different cases for buildings with and without cultural value. The first case is uh, a container without value, cultural value. And the second case is a container with historical cultural value. In the first case, the building can have a fundamental impact in risk management in terms of uh, technical and architectural characteristics. They can influence in particular the emergency manage management process. And in this case, we can digitize all the technical features which influence uh, the risk assessment and the emergency management process. In the case two, where we have an historical cultural value, in addition to reporting everything stated in the case one, uh, the building can uh, involve a lot of limitation 
in enhancing security measures and an higher level of uh, fragility. And in this case, uh, the information on the buildings is digitized and the container is, uh, is identified uh, an historical object is itself. So we have to treat the building itself as an historical object. And it is fundamental to record the, uh, all the critical issues and all the fragilities. In this uh, slide, uh, there is uh, our uh, digitization road uh, divided for phases. And in the next slides, uh, we will touch them uh, uh, deeply to understand better the process. But let's see them together. So phase zero, awareness. Phase one, identify content and container. Phase two, catalog objects and features of the container. Phase three, analyze contingencies, needs and fragilities. And phase four, plan, design and prevent. So we can ask ourselves in which phases does digitization intervene? Uh, actually from phase one to phase four. Um, they are all part of the digitization process and starting from phase one we need a support of some specialists in the sector. Uh, the phase zero is totally different uh, and it, it depends on human decision and it's very important this phase because without this phase the process cannot be activated spontaneously. In phase zero is also crucial for um, some decisions. So it's crucial for choosing the strategy to undertake. Uh, just let's make an example. Um, develop a proprietary solution, so in-house solution, or choose uh, an outsourced solution, an outsourced product. And about phase zero, speaking about phase zero, I like this uh, statement of uh, Carl Gustav Jung. Uh, there is no awareness without pain. He was a Swiss uh, psychoanalyst who founded uh, the, the analytical psychology. He was one of the world major influencer of the psychological concept uh, in uh, 20th century. And this concept is so, so important for us to understand uh, this type of process. The awareness is the only spark that uh, can light the right fire. And this is the reason why we must train people to understand how to deal with risk and how much all of us can lose without addressing this problem. Now we can analyze uh, all the steps uh, to follow uh, to perform a risk assessment and management strategy. So analyze phase one, analyzing phase one, um, where we can identify content and container. Uh, we can call this phase one analysis phase. And in this moment, it is necessary to identify the most correct partner to plan a strategy. And with the, te the technician, uh, you will have to choose a lot of things. Uh, for example, what and how to digitize information, what means to use, the amount of information to digitize, useful for the, for the goal, and your standard and your best practice. Then we can pass to phase two, where we catalog objects and features of the container. In this phase, the, the part of uh, digitization becomes uh, operational. It will be necessary to choose our um, way to deal with the problem. Uh, for example, outsource the data collection and data entry 
or carry it out with internal resources, or a mix of the two option before. In phase three, we analyze contingencies, needs, and fragilities. So this is the processing uh, and risk uh, assessment phase. Uh, with the data analysis phase combined uh, with the, the collection of uh, environmental information, contingencies, uh, fragilities and needs, for example, renewal, renovation, opening to the public events, uh, all the information allows the elaboration of a real strategy. And then we pass through phase four where we plan, design, and prevent. When the first phases of the digitization process are defined, now it is possible to proceed to the management stage. This is the management stage. So our goal. Okay, we can speak about uh, technology. Technology actually is a word a bit too big to be real because technology is all over the places, all over the sectors. So how to decide which technology we have to apply to our needs, a very specific need. Um, we have to start from our objectives, goals and our availabilities, because we have to take advantage of the technology uh, with uh, our potential. So basically we must uh, ask uh, ourselves at least four questions. What do we want to achieve? What can we manage? How much time do we have? And how many resources are available? Because if we don't have a reply uh, to one of these questions, probably we are not prepared to the future. And then I can give you some suggestion uh, on my experience. So start with the simplest thing. Uh, we can manage things uh, applying pyramid thinking and please involve the whole team. So, I'm sorry. Um, Let's see these three suggestions. So start with the simplest thing. Uh, quite often, we want to reach uh, perfection immediately in a short time uh, with the smallest effort, uh, but obviously is not the real world. Um, so the best thing to do is to start thinking and planning the simplest thing, what we can afford and reach and with the calculated amount of time and costs. Uh, for example, not many time ago, I've heard museums speaking about blockchain and NFTs in a daily base without any knowledge of these technologies, um, like a fashion tool to have. I think we have to go back and look at the substance, avoiding waste of time and money. Uh, if we still miss the basis, to protect the world heritage. So let's start from the base. Um, 